So I think at this point in our lives, most of us have been through a lonely period, you know, whether that was a time where you were going through something really hard, or I think a really lonely period for a lot of us was puberty, where everything's changing in your life, everything's changing about yourself, and lonely times are inevitably gonna come up again and again. And I've confined it down to a three-step process that I'll go into later on in the video. And I wanna go into the process, but first I wanna talk about what I think loneliness actually is, because I think having a good grip on what loneliness actually is is gonna help you understand what it is and help you understand how to get through it. So obviously when people think of loneliness, they usually think of people literally alone, because uh, the words are the same. But, you know, they usually think of somebody like alone in a room who doesn't get out much, or they think of somebody who sits alone at the lunch table, or they think of somebody who's just, you know, at the park doing something by themselves. And that is one way to perceive loneliness, but I think that doesn't even capture the whole picture. I think those situations are more of a potential symptom of loneliness and not the actual issue itself. So loneliness can make you end up alone, but I don't think that's what loneliness actually is. But people tend to perceive it as the symptom. And usually when people picture people who aren't lonely, they picture people with tons of people around them. So like somebody who has like a large group of friends, like people always around them, giving them anything that they really need from a person around them. And the truth is, is yeah, usually those people aren't lonely, but that isn't always the case. And I think perceiving loneliness as just people around you is only a very small part of a much bigger picture. So what loneliness actually is, and I think a lot of us know this by now, especially once you get to a certain age, loneliness has nothing to do with the people around you. It has to do with how understood you feel as a person. Because when you talk about spending life with people, you really talk about sharing the experience. You wanna share the experience with people and you want people to understand your experience. And if somebody doesn't understand your experience, then it's not really fun to share at all. I think it's really easy if you're not constantly looking for new friends in life or constantly realigning your friends with you, to eventually feel like all your old friends don't get you anymore. They feel like your paths have diverged a little bit and you're talking to friends and yeah, it feels good to reminisce about old times and that's fine, but you feel like you wanna talk about the future. You wanna talk about things that you wanna be doing in your life and it feels like they don't relate to that. And that's a very lonely feeling to talk about your goals and your aspirations and have somebody kind of not get that. Because it's one thing for somebody to physically be there, but for somebody to actually be there with your like energy, whatever you wanna call it, like your mindset, that's actually somebody being there. Being there physically is barely anything. In fact, sometimes it's better if you don't have somebody around you just misunderstanding you because feeling crazy about the way you are is just going to drive you crazy and it's going to make you feel really misunderstood. So I think it's important first to understand what loneliness is and that's kind of how I've defined it in my life and I think most people would agree at this point that loneliness has nothing to do with physical presence, it has to do with being understood. But without further ado, let's get into the three steps that I think you can take to kind of overcome loneliness. It's kind of a long process and it's a little ambiguous, but I think it'll give you a great framework for understanding how to overcome loneliness and how to feel like you're more understood in life and really reshift your whole life because your aspirations aren't crazy. Your aspirations are not crazy. They deserve to be fulfilled and they deserve people around you who feed the energy. And that's gonna make you feel way less lonely. You're gonna be way more ambitious. You're gonna have way more energy in life. So let's go into it. So the first two steps are kind of preparatory steps and the third one is the action item. So the first two steps are one, you need to understand your goals. And whatever that is, like even if it seems far-fetched, if you deep down believe that you want 10 billion dollars and that's something you really think you want to aspire to have in life then you can go for that if you just want to live a life you know out in the wilderness in a cottage and that's like a goal of yours or you want to become a designer whatever it is you have goals in life and if you're feeling lonely i would imagine at this point you've probably been told a lot of times that your goals are either unachievable or people don't understand them or they think it's crazy or they think it's stupid uh or they think it just isn't going to do good for you in life whatever it is you know what your goals are and don't lie to yourself everybody knows what their goals are and if they don't think they know what they are i think they're probably surprised pressing them because they think they're stupid or they think they're unattainable or they think they're not going to serve them in life. So the first thing to do is define your goals. And I would just take out a piece of paper. You can pause the video or you can write down the steps and do it after the video, but take a piece of paper, write my goals and anything that comes to your head, just write it down on a piece of paper. Like what are your goals? What are the things you want in life? Even if it's just like, I want to eat 20 boxes of Twinkies. I don't know why there'd be a goal, but if it's something crazy like that, you can go ahead and do that. And once you have your goals down, just look at those kind of categorize them a little bit, understand what your goals are and try to find some like bigger circles you can draw around the goal. So maybe you have like a goal of like making a bunch of money and starting a business and having a penthouse in New York City. I don't know what it is like I, I, if you just really want to be super wealthy, you can kind of put those all into the bubble of like wealth accumulation. So understand that like what your goals are, write down all your minor goals, try to put them into bigger categories and understand what the big picture is of your goals and try to find like a direction of them. Once you have your goals defined, I think the even more important step is to define your values. And this will get back to loneliness in a second, I promise. It's probably losing a lot of people, but define your values. So write down on a piece of paper, you're gonna have all your goals on one side and then write values on the other. And whenever your values are like, maybe you value 
frugality, maybe you value loyalty, but you get the point, write down your values and just kind of understand what your values are and do the same thing you did with a goal. So like define your values and try to find like bigger categories you can put your values into and like look at your list of values and see what are my goals and what are my values and try to combine it down to like six, that'd be ideal. So like three goals, three values. And then the third step um, is to use all that information. And I know this is kind of a vague step, but the idea is use all that information to kind of refine the people around you. So here's a hard truth about friends um, and something that I've learned recently in my life. And I think a lot of people could benefit from this advice. A lot of people have friends that they hold on to for a long time. I've had friends that I've known since I was very young and I've had friends that are quite new who I feel pretty close to. And I have all friends in between. But the point is, is a lot of people base the value of their friendships off of shared pasts. They think that was a really long friendship. It was like a 20 year long friendship. I can't cut it off now because then what was all that for? It was for nothing. And that is as many people know now, that's the sunk cost fallacy. So the idea that your friendship was worth nothing because you had a 20 year long friendship and you're cutting it off now, that's not actually true. The 20 years of value is still there. It still exists. It's still been consumed and you still get to experience that value for the rest of your life. What you should really be basing your friendships off of, instead of shared pasts, look to base your friendships off of shared futures. And this is a huge thing for you because this is what's gonna alleviate all the loneliness and this is what's gonna make you feel like people actually understand what you're talking about, what you want in life, and you feel like people can actually go on this journey with you. So take all the values and the goals you wrote down before and odds are most people have like two, three close friends. Do it with your two, three close friends too. See, of your like three close friends, write down what you think their values and their goals are from your perception. That's all this matters. It only matters from your perception what their goals and values are because you are you and they are them. And how you feel about things is how you feel about things and that's something you need to worry about. Really look at how does your values align with theirs? Do you really feel like your values align with theirs? If there's a complete misalignment, then I'm not saying you necessarily have to cut friends off. I know that's pretty harsh advice. You can keep friends around that you have a long history with, but just kind of accept that maybe these friends are just meant to be somebody you go grab drinks with every once in a while and reminisce on old times. But that's kind of the only value they're gonna serve. Uh, if your paths have really diverged from each other. Um, and it's kind of a hard thing to admit, but I think it's gonna help you a lot if you have the ability to understand your goals and your values and find people who align with that. So to recap that section, just cause I went off on a couple tangents there, is there's three steps. You wanna define your goals, you wanna define your values, and then you wanna evaluate your friends based on those goals and those values. So write down the goals and values for your friends, just like you did with yourself. However you perceive them to be, don't try to like be honest, just whatever you actually think they are, how you perceive them, write them down see if your values and goals align with them. And if they do, then those are the ways that you can, you know, interact with those people, but don't try to force their values and goals to align with yours. It's not gonna work. It's gonna make you feel lonely. It's gonna make you feel estranged. It's gonna make them feel estranged. And it's just not a good time for anybody. It's gonna make everybody feel lonely. It's gonna make everybody feel weird. It should just kind of be avoided. So for anybody who needs it, I hope that helps you kind of overcome loneliness. I'm in Elysian Park right now, which is like the park where the Dodger Stadium is in Los Angeles. Um, yeah, I couldn't really find a spot to film, so I'm in like this weird location. Like I was trying to get the view, but the sun was there and it doesn't matter. I hope this is able to help somebody. My videos have been more ad hoc lately, like less scripted. So if you guys like it or you don't like it, let me know. That'd be great. It'd be helpful. I hope everybody has a good day. And I hope if you're feeling lonely out there that this helps you out. And I really advise you, if you are feeling lonely, at least give the exercise a try. Even if you think it's stupid, just give it a try. See how it goes. Worst case scenario, you know what your goals and values are now and you have them on a nice piece of paper. But yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.